It's all about monetization, Ben. It's all about the monetization. What's up, dudes? So uh, Ben and I today are working on a mic split project. This is a mic splitter that I bought from eBay in 2008, maybe? I think this was like 250 bucks that clearly somebody made this. I put it in a cool case. This is a 10 space rack unit. Ben and I just got done uh, testing all of the channels and we have one bad channel, channel four. So when I bought this thing in my early 20s, I was maybe 20 when we got this thing. Uh, I thought this was like a technological miracle because we didn't do any metalworking at LM. I didn't know how to solder at this point. Uh, these are some super old Switchcraft connectors that are on here. And uh, these are the tails. So, you know, like this is a 12 channel snake that we make at LM with our multi-core and all that kind of stuff. And it's, you know, compared to this, this is a bit of a joke at this point. Um, I looked at the gaff tape on this thing. The last time I used it was uh, March of 2023. This is the very first gig I mixed for Spirit, actually. Um, that was the last time this thing was used. It is currently October of 2025. So it's been sitting here for roughly two years completely unused, collecting dust in the shop. And this is the first time we've had to use it. So Ben and I have a, a, a remote recording gig tomorrow, and I figured let's just check it while we get this thing prepped. We have one bad channel. So I figured that this would probably be a good opportunity to A, talk about mic splits, because that's been a, talk, a topic of conversation around the shop lately. And uh, also, we can show you this piece of Billy audio history, this homemade mic split. And maybe one of you were watching were the ones that made this and put it on eBay. So anyway, we're going to take this thing apart. So check this out. This is the back of this thing. I mean, it's it's pretty uh, pretty simple. We've got a a fancy Y a fancy Y cable back here. That's uh, that's all this is with a ground lift switch on it. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of you guys freak out with uh, trans or a mic mic splits that that need a transformer, and I I think that a great majority of you don't really understand that you don't really need that. Um, it's just very cheap with companies like ART and Behringer to just include them if you're, if you're making a PCB. But a great majority of mic splitters don't actually have transformers. They are simply a over-glorified Y cable, which is what this is. So we've got a bad channel four, this guy. Let's see, is there anything that is clear and obvious as to what could be causing an issue? Wow, they didn't even use heat shrink on the back of these. That's pretty crazy. One of the bad things about this is the uh, tails just just bang into the back of this. I mean, and again, I never use it. I've probably used it 10 to 15 times during its entire lifespan of me owning it. Although it is funny, the case is cracked. I, uh, I had a gig in Florida that I needed to take this thing to, so it had one, one airline trip on it, and it actually, I guess, probably came from that. Very interesting. So, uh... Well, Ben and I are going to take this apart, and we'll figure out uh, what's wrong with it. Well, I think we've figured out the problem. There you go. Pin 1 and pin 2 are shorted someplace. But it's not apparent at the connector, which makes me believe that it might be in the cable someplace. Um, they did not use heat shrink on any of this. And God, I hate these, these Switchcraft connectors. I understand that they were industry standard and indestructible back in the day but my god these little set screws what a giant pain in the butt the reverse threading is so annoying you know you've got this little this little crimpy guy on here like this oof this is a hateful hateful connector <laughs> but i mean you know given the technology of the day i mean it is it is kind of easy to hate on switchcraft for this you know they've been making them forever i love this detroit diesel seafoam green that's uh that's on here so you know just a, a sign of the times industrial blue or whatever the heck this thing is called um so i i guess <laughs> we're gonna keep trying to find the short all right so here's what we found out the connections are good here and they pass continuity but once we put the actual cable tester and we did it with two um we're not we're seeing pin three but we're not seeing pin two or pin one which makes sense so not seeing pin two clearly just means that you know you're not getting the signal so unfortunately what that means is i believe that there is a short in the trunk line someplace which is literally 
the most difficult thing to fix, so hooray for us. Uh, so I think Ben and I are going to divide and conquer, and I'm going to take this apart, and Ben's going to solder me a connector. Hooray! <laughs> ben, has that lead smell? Amazing. Got to give these guys credit. They did do a really nice job with building this thing. And I think I bought, I think I paid like 250 bucks for it. Oh, nice. Which, I mean, there's probably more than that in connectors. Yeah. So we've got the wire removed from the loom. I feel like we owe it to the internet to show you why Switchcraft connectors are hated. So they're relatively fast to build, but they have these set screws on them. So you take the rear little rubber boot up apart with two of these, mm -hmm. and then you can slide it off. I mean, and then that guy's reversed. So it's going in when I turn it counterclockwise. And then it doesn't go all the way in, it just slides it out like that, which is actually pretty all right. So yeah. And that's how you build this thing. So we're gonna desolder to this. I figured let's not replace this with Neutrex so that it all matches because there really isn't anything wrong with this connector other than it just being as old as time. But, you know, that's where we're at. There we go. So we are using the existing Switchcraft connector and we added this little piece of heat shrink on there. And this, uh, Ben and I's joke for the past 20 minutes of doing this is this is the best Tom 4 or Tom 1 channel. And then we started with the great debate of Ben uses snare bottom, and I don't use snare bottom, so my patches are always, I don't use kick out, and I don't use snare bottom. Ben? I use, I don't use kick out, but I use snare bottom, so it'd be kick in, snare, snare bottom, hat, and I like it, I don't know. So my theory with not using snare bottom is I only use snare bottom if we're in the studio and it's a very, very deep drum, and that's rarities but i here i'm gonna i'm gonna trigger you in the comment section <laughs> with this so here's my input list kick in kick out snare top snare bottom hi-hat tom one tom two mono overhead and then stereo overhead no what that was like i read something it was like how to trigger a festival sound guy it's like kick in kick out snare top snare bottom Mono. mono overhead. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Which I always thought was ridiculous. When I worked at Rockwood, it was kick in, kick out, snare top, tom one, tom two, mono overhead. And I'm like, oh my God, like all the recordings that I mixed from there, I'm just like, Jesus, if we could just have stereo, stereo overheads. overheads, it would be amazing. Yeah. That was a big deal. Yeah. So here's where we're at. Uh, our joke about the world's best sounding uh, Tom One mic is uh, we're using Star Quad here, so I don't know what the heck this other cable they're using is. Um, so we have Star Quad on channel four, so we're doing the um, the split line, and then we're also using the bridge connector. Let's see if I can read it. It's the Belden eighty four fifty one E one zero eight nine nine eight dash M two C T two. Hey, it's Belden though. That's cool. Just realizing that our sub is playing music from when we were testing this. I'm sure we're going to get a content flag. Um, so, Ben, mm -hmm. the uh, topic of conversation, because Ben and I are actually working on a spec for a, another band that's, uh, that is requesting the ever-popular Mike Splitter fly pack. So it's like two Pelicans, and that's the in-ear rig. Um, what should we tell the people at home about Mike Splits, and then what should the comment section tell us we're wrong about? Uh, well, you touched on the, like, you don't always need the transformer. You don't. But the transformer is useful if you have impedance issues. So let's address phantom power, because I know that that's uh, what they're all, they're all typing. what they're going to say. But what happens with phantom power? Who supplies phantom power? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, is the answer. And why is that not a problem? Because it's in parallel. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's what you're all saying. What phantom power? Who gets phantom power? It doesn't matter who supplies phantom power. One of you has to supply phantom power. So in a transformer, when you have an ISO and a direct side, it matters. Who supplies phantom power then, Ben? The main, the non-transformer side. Correct. So it's like, it doesn't really matter. And let's talk about mic pre's. What is in front of a mic pre? There is an input transformer on it. 
Sometimes. Most of the time. Yeah. So it's just like, I think everybody is just so scared by this. And I admit, I was too. And I did a lot of bands that they would come in with an over-glorified Y cable a lot of times. And sometimes it wouldn't even be in a rack panel. It would just be literal Y cables. Yeah. And I'm like, well, Yikes. I will That's use this Absolutely. until it's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and I, on 9 out of 10 times, it was never a problem. So, I mean, even when you're looking at a big concert split, like uh, most of the times they're just giving you the ground lift cable in there. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we actually do sell at LM is a pin one lift cable. Mm -hmm. You can buy that from lmcasesonline.com uh, for a situation that you don't have it. But again, if you look at this kind of stuff, this is a 10 space rack panel and this gets you 32 channels. So if you're in fly pack world, you don't have this much room. You have maybe a four space rack to deal with. So, you know, to do this in the old way that's in the old school way of, of hand wiring this um, and it's not on a PCB, that's a problem. So, you I like, know. I like the, the comment section. You're just going to be like, this guy is struggling like crazy over here. I'm just <laughs> having a hard time. <laughs> a hard time oh, no. They're going to they are gonna <laughs> tell you. They are going to tell me how wrong <laughs> I am and how dangerous I am. And no one should listen to Billy. And if you listen to Billy, your show won't sound good and your gear will explode. And you can't send phantom power to the monitor console and the front of house console at the same time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Which, also, just be careful. It's not that hard. Be careful. You don't understand, Ben. There's going to be stagehands that don't know what they're doing, and I'm going to give them this mic split, and Phantom Power at 48 volts is going to light my entire rig on fire. Yep. And I tour with vintage Neumann U87s, mm -hmm. and your mic splitter is going to blow it up. It would have blown it up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> don't apply logic to this. We're <laughs> being our own comment section while we're doing the zoom in on Ben just to make him nervous. Oh, yeah, you're making me real nervous here. <laughs> My my soldering is not working well at the moment. That's okay. You're doing it on film. It's impossible to do it do it well. Um, so yeah, this is a you know a mess. We're talking about how do we actually do this? They have these weird like little take apart things on here that I ended up just cutting. I don't even know what these were. I thought for years I thought they were just zip ties that somebody just didn't trim well. But they're actually little like take apart things. So I guess if you need to take it apart without tools, you can. Yeah, look at that. It's convenient. Which is pretty cool, I suppose. Again, I use this thing a collective maybe 10 times throughout the, I, I guess, what, 15 or 20 years that I've owned it. Because, you know, <laughs> there, uh, there were analog consoles prevalent when I bought this thing. The X32 did not exist yet. So anyway, we're going to keep soldering. We'll check back in. Okay, Ben, what's the real issue? We started talking as soon as I stopped recording, and I thought that it was gold, so we're back. What's the real issue about not using a transformer? Well, the, the, the real issue I could see is not about, like, sending fan power twice. I could see if, like, if for some reason the soundboard you're using isn't built properly and it doesn't have protection. So, like, if you're sending from front of house and then the monitor board doesn't have the right protection for its circuitry. But, I don't know. I feel like that's probably not much of an issue so if you have like i mean i think that if you look at it from a building standpoint that's the that's where my brain is always going like how do you make a lot of these things so if you're trying to cram the most amount of features in you know a, a split transformer is just a one to two jensen transformer most of the time like if you look at it just look up jensen they have one to one transformers that are isolation transformers and then they have one to two and one to three splits. Yeah. If you're building this out of a PCB to begin with, it's very, very easy to just have a PCB mounted transformer that does the split. Yeah. It's arguably easier to do that than wire all the wires. Than to wire all the wires if you're doing it like this. So they get the added benefit of A, it solves the split problem with a transformer. And then it also is easier to build and they get marketing material out of it to say this is a transformer isolated split am i wrong on any of that assessment benjamin mm -hmm. to fact check me i don't think so i think i'm right also and then they sell you a pad because that's another easy thing to do i can't give you a pad on any of this stuff i didn't make this also i would have never riveted these connections in it's easier way faster but i wouldn't have done it anyway i'm gonna leave ben alone we got it working. Yes. So clearly the short was in the cable mm -hmm. someplace. 
So all we really have to do now is just neaten this up. Ben is using his very fancy Knipex side cutters, and I have my poor man janky Klein cutters for flesh cutters because Ben's expert craftsman hands can only use a $30 set of Knipex side cutters. Look how easy that was. <laughs> This is also just my attempt of baiting the algorithm uh, so that you guys can be like, oh, $30 for side cutters, that's insane. I really have no reason other than showing you these other than to troll you. I can tell you that the Knipex stuff is amazing. It is really good. It's also in my Amazon store. If you buy that, I'll make eight cents if you if you buy eight it. Eight cents. <laughs> Count them. All right, I think we've milked this video for as long as humanly possible for taking apart a 20-year-old mic splitter and uh, just talking about stuff. So anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you guys on the next one. Bye.